Horse welfare is uh, at the heart of what we do at IRT and is a very important part of our business. My colleagues are pretty amazing in the work that they do. It's, it's a real logistical effort to coordinate um, all these horses from different yards, get them in one place, make sure they, they're quarantined correctly and in accordance with importing country requirements, organise the flights. Like people, uh, each horse kind of adapts a little bit differently to long haul travel. Some obviously will cope better than others. Um, interestingly, horses do cope quite well with flying because um, it's quite smooth as compared to say road transport. So most of the time they sort of settle in and munch on their hay and um, you know enjoy the trip. Um, uh, and obviously these horses here in Newmarket that are traveling to the Victorian Spring Racing Carnival, a lot of them are fairly seasoned travelers. So I'm sure a lot of them will travel very well. One of the, the key risk factors for the spread or introduction of um, equine disease to other countries is the international movement of horses. Um, so to minimise that risk of, of horses that are flown internationally bringing disease with them, um, most countries will impose some form of quarantine either pre-export or post-arrival. At its core, quarantine is really about isolating those horses from the general horse population and providing an opportunity to monitor the horse's health um, and test them for certain diseases um, prior to them uh, getting on the plane and travelling. Um, the requirements do vary from country to country a little bit and of course today we're talking about travelling to Australia. There are quite um, uh, an array of strict biosecurity measures um, before a horse can travel to Australia. Um, Australia is fortunate to be free of uh, many diseases that affect horses in other countries. Um, so here in Newmarket um, uh, it's quite a challenge to uh, enable the horses to be able to exercise still while they're in quarantine so they can remain fit um, for their races. Um, so we work very kindly with the Newmarket Jockey Club who really help to keep that isolation from the general population here in Newmarket. Once those horses are accepted uh, to, to travel to the race, um, they enter quarantine here in Newmarket and they have to do a minimum of 14 days pre-export quarantine here. Um, they undergo a series of uh, tests and, and treatments. Um, once all those tests return negative results, um, we ask permission from the Australian government to continue our onwards travel to Australia. Um, and then once they get to Australia, they do another 14 days post-arrival quarantine or PAQ. We always travel our horses with a professional flying groom, um, so these guys are amazing. They, um, their profession is to, to fly horses around the world. They're very, very experienced. They know exactly how to keep um, these equine athletes you know, comfortable and happy throughout their journey. Over here, we're in um, quarantine inside Hailstud, and we have to shower before we go into quarantine. Um, and we wear our suit, um, very, very strict. And we go out on the heath in the evening at four o'clock, that's when he's allowed to do his exercise, because obviously no one's allowed out, certain cancers to do it. So his normal would be like Warren Hill, Steady, then Roundside Hill. In order to enter pre-export quarantine, or we call PEQ, um, every person who enters has to be authorised by the official veterinarian who oversees quarantine. Very importantly, they have to take a three minute shower, including washing their hair, um, prior to each entry to PEQ. Um, that's because uh, a lot of equine diseases can actually be transmitted on people. Um, we have to make sure that they don't bring any new equipment into pre-export quarantine, so all their riding gear um, is in quarantine before it starts. Um, if they do have to bring a phone or anything in, that's all disinfected. They dip their boots before they come in. Um, and then once that they're in quarantine, they change into dedicated clothing. Most horses, especially these race horses, will travel with a passport. Um, they're usually uh, issued by um, the sort of uh, a breed society or um, in the case of sport horses by um, the International Equestrian Federation. Um, so they, they serve as both an identity document and they also um, record their sort of key vaccinations and things like that in those documents and they do travel with the horses.